Hello, and welcome to another Toy Box Audio Video Demonstration video. Uh, we will today be looking at our analog vocoder. Everyone loves a good vocoder, uh, as, as we all know. Everyone loves a vocoder. But let's have a look at my basic environment I've set up here to demonstrate the vocoder. Got my basic objects up here, mixer and a limiter to stop the output peaking. Here's the SuperSaw device we previously looked at in another video. I'm using that as the carrier for the vocoder. After the SuperSaw we're going to a simple envelope just so we can stop the damn noise when we fancy it. And after the vocoder we're going just into a chorus to... Uh, because that's what you do after a vocoder. And uh, down here we have the mic in path I'll be using to modulate the carrier signal. I'm just going into a high pass here using the basic mini filter, some light compression and a little high shelf at the end just to give a little... My microphone is uh, slightly dull at the top end, but it's nice when you boost it. So. That's my in-chain. Here's the vocoder. Um, with basic settings, it sounds like this. We've got a three-octave chord spread coming into it. So it's quite thick and deep. Um, so this analog vocoder here, let's start here. The functions here, we have a tilt, which basically brightens or dulls the input signal which can be useful depending on if you've balanced it previously like I have here or you might want to adjust it just for effect itself the powerful button the shift knob this is where you shift the formant signature so the signal from the voice comes in into the modulator it gets detected by so many bandpass filters and those filters detection frequencies can be shifted up and down to change the spectrum of the sound so hear this I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm still talking I'm shifting my voice back and forth the spectrum maintaining the spectral signature of my words so you can still hear what I'm saying being shifted around like this and when the pitch port is populated <laughs> um, with uh, from the a note in or whatever you want to populate it with the shift ultimately I would call it format shift knob is uh, then attached to the pitch and the shifting is tracked by the pitch signal coming into it which can lead to interesting effects. Next, we have the noise. This is a volume, so we up the noise and we will hear white noise become more part of the signal. Oh, that's sibilant, let's just drop that high a little bit. And in the options page, we can change that noise from white to pink for a slightly Duller experience. Let's stick it back on white for the moment. Here we have, this is a slope. This basically describes the width of the bandpass filter slopes. So with a low resonant setting, it might not be easy to distinguish between what's going on. So here's a very wide slope up to a very narrow slope if we up the res of each of these bandpass filters you begin to hear the characteristic of each of those filters a bit clearer so if we drop the slope again the character changes but not significantly if we increase the res, we can hear much better the quality of the voice. I'll tell you what, let's turn the noise back down again. 
So we have the basic vocoder sound. Keep the res an interesting frequency. Let's up the gain again. We've turned the white noise down so we can afford to add a little bit of high end back into the signal again. So, and after the resonant feature of the bandpass filters, obviously we can max that out and get the ringing that we are so familiar with. And again, this can be shifted around beyond where you'd expect it to be. Yes. Okay, and back to the middle again. So, here we have the attack and decay knobs. Attack softens, softens my, my attack. So that you can turn any sound into a kind of pad if you choose to do so. It's quite a nice texture to add into your feature tracks. So we drop the decay down. Obviously, if we put the attack to almost zero, we can inch of our words becomes elongated, which is all part of the fun. So that's the basic front end interface. Oh, and we can, uh, just as additional information, the two ports here send out either the odd bands or the even bands. You can process them separately, so 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. Choose to process them separately for additional wonder, wonderment. Okay, so we flip to the options page. Let's just turn the res back down to a respectable level and look at these features. Here we have the number of bands available to you, obviously. The greater the band, the more detail can be heard. If I reduce it down to six, it's still an intelligible signal, but with much less information, and it probably won't sound as rich when we go low. But it's still quality, quality vocoding. So here, back to quality, we have three settings here. As you can see, I had it on the analog setting using the high quality zero delay feedback filters. If we switch to high quality, at this level, you may hear some small subtle changes. I don't know if you can hear them. If we switch to clean, there's a very clear difference between how the bands are processed. Let's increase the band count up to 16 or 24 and enjoy a few different quality settings in here. Uh, slightly, there's a slight resonant quality to that which is quite nice. So we'll put it back on our analog as that suits our temperament for the moment. And here again is the noise switch for switching between white and pink. Now the map button here, as you can see, will disorder your bands. So we can switch them upside down, which probably won't make much sense to a vocal signal. But you could have a lot of fun with drums and other percussive signals. And sh simple shifting up a little bit, like a kind of formant shift, but a different range is being detected. And again, same for shift two, a different range, a different skew. And this is completely nonsensical in terms of voice language. I cannot be understood very well. But as you can see, the uh, text describes the even modulator bands are reversed. So, much to play with here. And on this page here, we can just see basic dry wet, dry source up, a saturation, post saturation of the vocoded signal to add loveliness, as we all like to add to our, to our sounds. 
So that's that screen. Oh, and we have a little preset window up here, which will be populated with more presets in future, depending on your source signal, obviously. So if we flip back to the main page and we just enjoy... Oh, let's, let's flip back to this standard equal mapping. And let's look at this little button down here, which is called the Levels button. This will show you a level fader for each band pass filter. This is kind of advanced users, but please feel free to mess around with it at your whim. So ultimately, I'll just play with it and talk through the vocoder and you can hear what's going on. These are the low frequencies up here, so if I slowly set them all to zero, you'll hear the bass frequencies of my, my voice disappear. I'm talking, 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 I'm talking, and I'm talking, I'm talking. And we can take some high end off as well, obviously. We can shape the signal as we desire. Yes, yes. No one's ever had this particular vocoder configuration in the past. And uh, these frequency map options down here also enable you to change the timbre of the sound again. These are some band pass detection distribution frequencies that have been gleaned from some other equipment and um, other pieces of knowledge. Let's have a look. So we've got the B a Buchler style distribution which is pretty raw and beefy. I wonder what this, I don't know what this means, I couldn't possibly comment. But again, another vocoder. This is a major distribution of notes. Probably something to do with the major scale across a few octaves, I would have thought. Same for the minor. And there's some fifths which are quite spread out, so you might get uh, kind of emptiness in the middle, but it's still understandable as a vocoder. And there's a couple of others here, thirds, and the diminished sequence, which all those musers out there will know what a diminished distribution of notes is. Again, a timbral change, if anything, but it's subtle and useful. So there we go. We can also, if you fancy getting complex with your settings, change. Uh, you can store your patterns of band pass volumes in the little pattern distributor here. And if you fancy copying, you can copy it, copy your current band pass level volume to the next pattern. So we're on company pattern three, copy it to pattern four, it's the same, and we'll make a few adjustments, and there's four and three. Ultimately, that is the end. So I hope you enjoyed the exploration of our vocoder. Please vocode the world. Uh, briefly, I'll just turn up the dimension chorus because that makes things sound quite nice. Especially vocoders, as we all know. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.